But wait, what about fat loss? This is the section we've all been waiting for, right? If you're like most people, I'm sure you have questions. How do I optimize the amount of fat I burn during exercise? How do I train in my fat burning zone? Working at a low intensity really burns more fat, right? Well, yes it does, and no it doesn't. Depends on how you look at it. The premise for the quote unquote fat burning zone all started with this scientific truth. The body uses a higher percentage of calories from fat during low intensity work. During rest, probably right now in fact, up to 80% of your energy is being provided via fat metabolism. But did you catch the key word, or should I say symbol? Percent. At lower intensities, the body uses a higher percentage of fat. This includes low intensity activities such as sleeping or watching television or sleeping in front of the television. However, this also includes lower intensities of exercise. Lower intensities of exercise burn a higher percentage of fat than higher intensities of exercise, period. This is why the fat burning zones that you see on exercise machines are at the lower end of the intensity chart. They're all based on percentage of fat burned. Yes, it's all relative, but for fat loss, it's very relative. At lower exercise intensities, the body uses a higher percentage of fat and a lower percentage of carbohydrate for energy. As the intensity of exercise increases, the energy continuum shifts. The body gradually begins to use a lower percentage of fat and a higher percentage of carbohydrate. So it stands to reason that at low intensities, when you're burning a higher percentage of fat, you burn more fat than two, right? Wrong. In actuality, burning a high percentage of fat burns very little fat. Otherwise, the least intense activities you could perform, sleeping and watching television, would be the ideal activities for fat loss. I hope we all know this is not to be true. Sure, at low intensities you burn a higher percentage of fat, but you also burn a lower volume of fat. So try to follow me. At low intensities you burn a higher percentage of fat, but you also burn a lower volume of fat. Would you rather burn 100% fat at the rate of 50 calories per hour, with 50 calories of those being from fat, or 50% fat at the rate of 500 calories per hour, where 250 calories come from fat. Again, would you rather burn 100% fat, a high percentage, at a rate of only burning 50 calories an hour from fat? Or would you rather burn a lower percentage of fat, 50% fat, at the rate of 250 calories an hour from fat? Okay, here's the point. Although low intensity exercise burns a greater percentage of fat, higher intensity exercise, exercise above the level 13 on the stamina scale, has a greater impact on fat loss because high intensity exercise burns a greater total volume of fat. In a nutshell, it burns more fat. The total number of grams of fat burned is actually higher with higher intensity exercise because the total energy output is higher during intense activity. This should make sense because it's common sense. Think about it. I'll say it again. The number of total grams of fat burned is actually higher with higher intensity exercise because the total energy output is higher during intense activity. Here's my conspiracy theory. I think that the fat burning zones on exercise machines were a partial ploy on the part of equipment manufacturers to con people into the idea that their machines could burn body fat without the person having to work too hard. Yes, you can burn some fat at these levels, but there are much faster ways to get the task accomplished. Are you still with me? It's all right if you want to start over at the beginning and go through this part again. Let's finish with a concrete example, a fat burning comparison of an hour walk versus an hour run. Walking for 60 minutes burns approximately 400 calories. Of these 400 calories, maybe 200 will be from fat, so 50%. So during this hour walk, you'd burn 200 calories from fat. On the other hand, running for 60 minutes burns about 1,000 calories at an 8 mile an hour pace. Even if only 25% of these calories are from fat, you still burn 250 fat calories. In addition to the 250, the other 750 calories you burn from carbohydrate must be replenished after the run. During this replenishment process, energy is used to restock the carbohydrate that was expended from the muscles and the liver and glucose from the blood. Some of this energy also comes from burning more fat, 
bringing the total calories of fat burn from your 60 minute run to well over 250. So you're looking at 200 calories of fat burn during a walk and in the same time over 250 calories burn during a run. And because you're replenishing your energy stores during your recovery period, which occurs at a lower intensity, you're doing so by utilizing a higher percentage of fat. Additionally, during recovery, you're working at a lower intensity with a higher metabolism because you just completed an interval of higher intensity. Therefore, you're also providing more energy for your current workload, but at a lower intensity, which utilizes a higher percentage of fat. Whew. Okay, in a nutshell, you've basically cranked your metabolism to keep burning calories for a long time after you've finished the intense portion of your workout. Plus, you've challenged your circular respiratory and muscular systems to a much greater extent than you would have by only working in your lower intensity, high fat percentage, yet non-fat burning zone. Remember, and let me make this crystal clear, it is highly preferable to do a low intensity exercise than to do nothing at all. Also, on some days, like Sundays, your days of rest, at least from eccentrics and stamina, you may prefer to work at a slower pace. Or perhaps you were required to limit intensity because of certain medical restrictions. If you need to stay in the lower intensity zone for such a reason, then by all means do so. Nonetheless, please keep in mind that though you can always work out for longer periods, nothing will transform your body as quickly as seven brief, intense swings on the Super 7 Stamina Scale.